So tell me something. Like, what was your first experience of le- real leadership? Like, do you remember like when leadership started for you? Like, where was it? How was it? What happened? The first time you ever kind of, you know, touched upon some sort of leadership. Yeah. Um. To be honest, I think uh, generally I didn't wake up to the idea until very late. Um. And there was an incident one time where. Um, I returned back from a business trip and I had someone who was working with me um, and um, basically, you know, things didn't go according to plan. Sort of, uh, um, I asked um, uh, for something that didn't get, it, didn't get it back the way I expected and so on. Mm. And then I realized, you know what, um, I spent a lot of money on this trip, um, did a lot, and um, I didn't quite get the response I, I expected back from, from my team. So I thought you know what, there's something about this in this whole experience that I need to learn from. I'm not going to go into too much detail, but basically I, I really felt the fact that I'm responsible for this. Mm. You know, um, I need to take responsibility. At the end of the day, I can't pass the buck to anybody else for the failure of, of anything that happens in this business. It's, I'm, you know, I need to take that, that on my own shoulders. And I remember sort of almost changing my identity at that point. I remember I became this very sort of, you know, um, uh, authoritative person almost you know overnight it was like what's going on you know what are you going to take responsibility for this business or not are you going to are you really true to its aims are you do you really want it to succeed or not and it was a very kind mm. of i was questioning myself in that form and i and i remember it very vividly and i really felt okay that's the first time where i felt it was a real wake-up call to say you know you've really got to want this are you in it just for the ride or are you in it to really take this somewhere and uh, it was a very poignant question asked at the time and that was the first wake-up call i remember Mm. So very interesting. I've got a question for you about that then. Um, you know, it's very natural for us when we have a failure and things go wrong to look for someone to blame, right? Mm. So, uh, you know, you mentioned it didn't go so well. It would be very easy for you to blame that team member. Like, what mm. was it that made you kind of reflect and like kind of call to yourself rather than saying, well, that guy, he's a loser. He just messed up. So um, it's, again, about really thinking about, look, he can... Well, well that, if, if they do mess up, if the team, the team does mess up, at the end of the day, you know, I'm going to end up with, um, with, with, with the pieces. So I've got to take responsibility for it. I remember this, uh, one of my driving instructor told me many years ago, he goes, if you have an accident, or you, or, or, you know, if you're involved in an accident, it doesn't matter whose fault it is at the end of the day, both of your cars are going to be, you know, in, in a bad state, or some of you might be in a bad state. Hmm. So the issue is avoid the accident in the first place, take responsibility for it, do what you can to avoid it, even if you think the other person is more prone to um, uh, to making it happen. So, and that's really what it was about. It doesn't matter about, you know, where the responsibility, you know, it doesn't matter about you know, the specifics of the mistake. It's really about me taking the steps to make sure that this doesn't happen again. And that's really firmly in my hands and my influence. So where does this sense of responsibility come from? Because surely it didn't come at the time when uh, the employee kind of messed up, right? It, it's something deeper from, from before. So where does it come from? Yeah, so if you go like really deep, which is what I have to do sometimes, you know, as you, as you veer, veer off the path, um, uh, you know, things happen, day-to-day business, that kind of thing, or, or you get distracted over time, life life kicks in. So you have to have a way to extract yourself out of that situation and then realign yourself. Mm-hmm. So for me, I have my why, you know, and my why is what I turn back to um, each and every time um, to try and make, make sure that I go back to where I should be to realign. Um, my why is very personal, and um, I have, like, as I say, if your why doesn't make you cry, then it's not a why, yeah? Mm. It should really go to that emotional deep level. Um, and it should transcend this world, ideally, as a Muslim. It shouldn't be related to just this world. Um, it should be something that really relates to your position in front of Allah, as we were in the Akhira. And, um, and so that's, that's what I go back to, you know, to try and make sure that you know, mm. we, we realign. So I'm not going to ask you your why, because you just said it's very personal, <laughs> right? But 